Rebecca Miller's here in 1995. She made her film debut at the Sundance Film Festival with Angela. She was awarded the filmmaker's trophy. Conventional wisdom tells you she would have no trouble getting her next film financed. After several failed deals, she began writing. The result was a critically acclaimed book of short stories, Personal Velocity. She then wrote the screenplay to the book and shot the film in 17 days on a budget under $500,000. Personal Velocity won this year's jury prize at Sundance, and here is the trailer for the film. This proudly presents Stop! the award-winning new film from Rebecca Miller. Three portraits of three women transformed by the restless spirit that lives in us all. It's got to be something. It's got to be a sign. Everyone has their own personal velocity. Personal velocity. I am pleased to welcome Rebecca Miller back to this table. Welcome back. Thank you. This is what you want to do. This uh, and write. Yes. You know, yes. This whole acting thing that you went through, was it just to... Well, fill, fill the time or <laughs> no, it was really, you know, it was a sort of accident that I got these jobs uh, as an actress. And, and, and I was pretty conscious of wanting to be a director at the time. And I su managed to support myself while I was writing Angela and, and making the small, the shorter films yeah. um, and learning an enormous amount about directing. But all the time you said, I'm, this is not for me, I'm going to be a director. Yeah, I always knew that I wanted to be a director. I mean, I, I was a pain, when I was painting during that period, there was a moment where I, I, I had a break and I realized I had a kind of um, revelation that I wanted to be a filmmaker and it was a real crisis for me. That was a crisis. And then I went through a kind of transitional period. Um, but the acting, I knew, I always knew, was a kind of means toward learning about this other thing. But did you not like acting? It just wasn't. You know, I knew that it wasn't the, 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 the main talent that I had. I didn't have the kind of contribution to make to acting as I thought I did for to filmmaking or um, really. And I, I was I, I always wanted to see things from the other side. I had this I always was trying to see the whole thing, even when I was acting yeah. and rather than remain in my point of view. Yeah. So I couldn't. It was very frustrating. The other thing that amuses me or, or is of interest to me is this transition. You were a painter. You came out of Yale thinking you'd be a painter. You were influenced by two very talented parents uh, who had lots of creativity in their genes. Right. You know, what turned you from that to writing and to wanting to direct? Well, you know, I had written short stories before I went to college and before I decided to concentrate on painting. And it was really between writing and painting. And I went toward painting really because I had an inspiring teacher who said, You're, you can be a painter, you should be a painter. And, and you know, it's, it's, it was sort of... Teachers are hugely influential on young people, and, and I went in that direction. Also, probably because I knew it was, could be more my own. You know, writing felt maybe more overshadowed for me. And um, so later on, as I was painting, I wanted more and more to tell stories. I wanted to break through in time. And that's when I started saying I was hungry to make films because they broke through, they moved through time. You know, it was my first films were actually like moving paintings, really, or yeah. really just like dreams. They were very dreamlike. And then I moved, then gradually the storytelling instinct kind of started to blend in with the visual, uh, with the visual strand, and that's when I really started to become a filmmaker. Could you have been a good painter? Um, I, thought, I, I think I made some good paintings. I mean, I, I, I really made a go of it, but in the end, I think I'm really doing what I was meant to do. I, I really am have such an intense curiosity about people and about character and I also love speaking visually so it, it really it suits me very well personally. This comes out of where's my book? This comes out of uh, this book. Uh, seven stories in here. Yeah. How did you come to take three of these, put them in a film with a male narrator? These are stories of women making change. Right. Well, the way it happened, just in terms of the story, is that I was, I was actually um, writing these stories. I had sort of turned away from filmmaking, or at least turned away from waiting to make films. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell stories anyway. And I started to write these stories, because I thought, what do I do all day? I write screenplays. Why not write something that has some, some function outside of uh, being made as a film? When Gary Winnick, who uh, was producing the series of mini DV films, mini digital films, called me and said, do you have anything for one of these films to be shot in 16 or 17 days? He's very, and I said, no, none of my scripts was I really willing to sacrifice to that. And they, I, they, none of them were right for it. And I said, but maybe read one of the stories or a couple of the stories. Maybe we could do something. And he read uh, first Delia and then Greta and said, 
what about making a trilogy? So it was he, him who said it. And the minute he said, what about making a trilogy, I got so excited. And I thought, because suddenly the form, I, I saw what I could do with the form and the freedom I could have with it. And he was being so generous in terms of freedom. He let, gave me complete freedom in terms of the script. And that, that's how that whole idea was born. These stories don't have neat little endings. They just it, no. have somebody on a journey. Yeah, I mean, I think the only real ending is, is death, and even that is, I suppose, you know, a, a question. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's liberating In other words, about, there's not a beginning, a middle, and an end here. No. You're, there are portraits of, of a span, a certain portion of each woman's life, and you're seeing her at a moment of crisis, and you're seeing how she makes a choice, and something of her past that makes you understand a little bit more why, she, why her choice seems almost inevitable, even when it seems like a strange choice. Is this a subject that fascinates you, the relation between women and men and, and women in, in transition? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, transition is, is where motion, you know, is, is where motion comes into life. So, of course, that's more interesting to me than stasis. Um, and uh, what makes us choose? How do we choose? Why do we choose? How much is choice really our choice? And how much is it, you know, being affected by our parents, our personal histories, or even history on a larger scale? You know, that, that, that's to me fascinating. Tell me about Delia before we take a look at a clip with her. Who is she in the short story? Delia is a woman who's intensely sexual, sensual woman who got herself into a marriage and with a man. has been for a long time. Yes, since she was sort of the school slut <laughs> growing up. And, uh, but, and, 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 her, and her, her whole psychology really formed itself around her body, which developed really early. And, I, and partly I'm talking, you know, asking the question of how much is our physicality, you know, does it form us and who we are. And, um, and uh, she marries a, a man that she loves but who ends up, abusing her and it's about how she kind of reclaims herself and chooses to leave but also begins to reclaim her earlier self. Roll tape, here it is. You ever been in love with a man who hits you? No. Do you have any kids? No, I don't. Then leave me alone. I'm sick of seeing your face every f***ing day smiling like you just took the greatest sh of your life. I just want to introduce to the audience at home these three characters. The next one was my favorite. This is Greta, played by Parker Posey. Um, tell me where she is in her head. Greta is a cookbook editor who's currently working on uh, a book about how to make rice pudding, 365 ways to cook rice pudding. She <laughs> is somebody who graduated from Harvard. Is very, you know, was a brilliant student. Was a law student. She dropped out of her whole life. Uh, from, yeah, and did some brilliant editing while she was at Harvard. Uh, was yeah. an editor at Harvard, and she kind of dropped out of her life and 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 tossed away her ambition because of something she discovered about her father. And uh, and uh, this is about and made a marriage that is a, a beautiful, solid marriage in many ways, but is kind of maybe not completely true to her true identity. So she, so she wonders what she's doing. She has a crisis, yeah. She has a crisis of thinking that she's going the wrong yeah. way. Now, would she have had this crisis if she hadn't gotten this opportunity to do this terrific editing? In other words, did the idea of getting a job, A, with an opportunity to do something very creative, apart from what she'd been doing, almost seem to free her? Yes, it certainly did, but I still feel it was kind of inevitable that she would rediscover that ambition because if, you know, a girl of that kind doesn't, you couldn't have lain, lain dormant forever in her, I don't think. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Roll tape. You want some tomato juice? Sure. What do we know about her in the end? We know that she's leaving her husband. We know that. We know that at the last frame of this right. piece. That's right. when we know it. Yeah. Well, we know it when, we know. when she realizes it. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, she puts her hand on the back of his shoulder, and she knows she cannot stay here. Right? Right. We don't know where she's going. No. We don't know what she's going to do. We know she's going to continue to edit because she's had a big success at that, so she's on right. a new track there. It's the first day of her new job. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, shooting that scene was really interesting because 
in the in the in the text it just says you know that she's she realizes it and tears come to her eyes of shame I think it, and, and 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 you know suddenly she because he's this beautiful man and and uh, she's going to dump her beautiful husband like a redundant paragraph it's, and um she as she has this revelation but what happened was he was reading her the paper and behind um, Tim Guinea who was who's playing her husband uh, Parker Posey was crying and it was so moving just to see her crying and him reading her the paper unconscious of what was happening and I let it play for a long time as one can with DV you know there, there isn't any limit really to how long you can uh, go and you know actually that was the scene that made me cry too because there was something so real about it and true real and true. Yeah, just that moment where you realize that you have to leave somebody who's a lovely person, but you just have to go because uh, something is propelling you away. Something that, uh, you know, that, that just makes it inevitable. Speaking of relationships, guess who was here last week? <laughs> My husband. <laughs> <laughs> he did well. Yeah, I heard. He's I didn't get to see it. I know, but he's a very interesting guy. Uh, yeah, very yeah. interesting. I mean, this, the, think about the gene pool here. His father was Port Laureate, right? What, you know. Yeah, I know. What are you doing in the self-education of Rebecca Miller as a director? Well, you know, I think that one of the best things you can do as a director and writer is to live. Because I think that movies that are about life and people, not necessarily, you know, kitchen sink dramas, but just, you know, emotion and, and, and reality of emotion, um, that's what interests me the most. Also, obviously, I love to. I mean, I love to lock, watch films. I've watched. I watch a lot of films, but I'm also very influenced by <laughs> painting. a very young age. You know, <laughs> yeah. But so, but uh, life itself is the most is the best teacher, I think, because really we should be talking to other people about life. That's what our job is. Would your mother teach you? My mother taught me an enormous amount about comp about composition about the power of um, the image and how images carry emotional power depending on if the, film, if, the sh if the frame is shifted to the left or the right. You know, depending on where the head is in the frame, you can create anxiety, you can create uh, a soothing image, you can create an anxious image. Um, she, she talked to me a lot about painting, about color. She was very, very influential in a way that also is kind of I think I'm only seeing now, it kind of seeped in um, without even my knowing it, because she took me to museums all the time when I was little and stuff. What's the next film? It's called Rose and the Snake, and it's, um, it's about, um, I guess, about innocence, really, and about idealism, and um, it's also kind of a coming of age oh, story. Oh, I've got it now then. <laughs> yeah, it's that, that's, that's exactly what it's about. That's exactly. It's about two people. Oh, that's easy now. I've got the <laughs> medicines and idealism. <laughs> yeah, those are the big things it's about. It's about a girl, and a 16-year-old girl and uh, her father. But it's, I don't know, it's a story that I wrote five years ago the first time, and then I rewrote it last summer, and now I'm making it at long last. That was one of the films I couldn't get made before. But, but because of this or because of something else, you can get it made now? Because of personal velocity, I've been, I could get a lot of things so, made so, uh, Really? Yeah. I mean, because they saw your abilities as a filmmaker, which they should have known from Angela, or because... Partly that, but partly I think it's just the way it was received and the fact that it, 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 has, it is a film that people are going to see. Oh, yeah. And in the end, you know, film, because it's so expensive, people want to know that you can make a little money back. It's a business. And, you know, I've always sort of stuck to my guns and done the things I'm really interested in. in. And luckily, personal velocity was something that also quite a number of other people seem to be interested in. <laughs> it's, doing, it's doing okay? Yeah, it seems to be really doing yeah. okay. Which, which is what? What do you think they're interested in? Who? People who like personal velocity and go see it. Oh, I think, you know, I think that they relate to it on a personal level. I think that, you know, many people can relate to one or more of those stories. Even the ones that aren't necessarily so close to them socioeconomically, like Delia might not be just like every woman in the yeah, audience sure. in New York City, but on the other hand, there might be one of them who identifies with her sort of sexuality or maybe with her inability to get out of a, an abusive or even kind mm. of verbally abusive relationship. I mean, you know, since I can relate to all three of these women, I feel like um, a lot you of other people can. You can relate to all three of them? Oh, yeah, definitely. How can you relate to Delia? You haven't been in an abusive relationship? Well... Or have you? You know, I haven't been in a physically abusive relationship, but um, I've definitely been in a relationship where I was being um, 
treated very badly. And I, and I, um, you know, and I think a lot of women have. Um, no, don't go, stay with yourself for me. Well, I mean, you know, I, I also think that, that um, I wasn't the school slut, but, but, but at the same time, I know what it's like to have my identity somewhat, um, you know, my sexuality formed when I was an adolescent. And so, you know, a lot of one's identity is then kind of wrapped around that, about how you, you know, the way that you're first perceived or perceive yourself. Um, and now I'm getting really embarrassed. But anyway, that, so, uh, you know, I don't but, think but, it's... Okay, then how can you identify? I'll sl go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is, like, for me, like, if I'm not embarrassed by my work, I don't feel like it's any good. And when I see personal velocity, I feel, you know, ashamed in a way, you know, or like I don't want, I feel revealed. And, 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 and that's not to say that I'm in every frame or, in, in fact, biographically, I'm in none of them. But, but, but yet part of me is in each of them. Personal velocity. Congratulations. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you.